this particular study, um, the Apollo study, was in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. So they must have received at least one prior line of treatment, including lenalidomide and a proteasome inhibitor. So patients could be, could be um, included after one li line of therapy if they received both of those drug in the, drugs in the first line setting or in the second or third or whatever first line setting if they did receive these drugs um, subsequently, subsequent to each other. A total of 304 patients were enrolled. They were randomized to one to one to either Dazelex, pomalidomide, and dexamethasone, the DPD group, versus the pomalidomide and dexamethasone group, um, the PD group. So if we look at the, the patient demographics, it's actually between those two arms, um, approximately 150 patients in each arm, it was very, very well balanced. The um, median age was 67 and 60 um, years, 68 years of age. The patients were mostly equal one um, status, and um, the median time since diagnosis was 4.5 years. And kind of importantly, the number of prior regimens was um, had a, was a median of two. And as I mentioned, 11% of patients actually received this as a second line treatment, so they had one prior um, regimen. 50 to 60% of the patients had uh, prior stem cell transplant. And it's, you know, another important element is um, that 80% of patients were refractory to their prior treatment. 80% of patients also were refractory to lenalidomide. And 47 to 49% of patients were refractory to prior proteasome um, inhibitor administration and 42% were refractory to um, both lenalidomide and proteasome inhibitor. So it's a heavily pretreated patient population. And um, you know, the, the primary endpoint of this study was progression-free survival. The median progression-free survival was 12.4 months for the DPD arm versus 6.9 months for the PD arm. And that's a hazard ratio of 0.63, which is a 37% reduction in the risk of progression or death. And that was um, highly statistically significant. Um, when you look at the PFS curves and you look at the, the rate at 12 months or after one year, the rate of progression-free survival um, after 12 months was 52% for the DPD arm and 35% for the um, PD arm. And one of the secondary endpoints was overall response rate. And it actually also compared very favorably for the DPD arm versus the PD arm with 69 versus 46%. But when you look at the, the patients with complete response only, um, you saw that only 4% of patients with, um, with pomalidomide or dexamethasone had a complete response or, or better. And this rate was six, down, six times higher in the um, DARA PD um, was 25%. And the last efficacy endpoint I would like to talk about is the MRD negativity. And you probably know that um, in multiple myeloma, there's a lot of discussion around the minimal residual disease negativity as a surrogate marker for, for efficacy. And that rate was actually four times higher in the um, DPD arm versus the uh, PD arm with 9% and 2% um, MRD negativity respectively. What does it mean? Um, it shows you know, that in relapsed and refractory setting that there are tumor map in combination with pomalidomide and dexamethasone seems to be, and this is what the author said, an effective and uh, convenient treatment for patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma, having at least one prior line of therapy, including, a, um, including lenalidomide and proteasome inhibitor.